Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome to our virtual class. By the way, I'm Jamalia Enero and I'm your teacher this morning. Our topic this morning is all about Romanticism, 1800s to 1810s. This, and this is our objectives. A. Identifies representative artists from Romantic periods. B. Appreciate the uniqueness of Romantic period arts. C. Creates artworks guided by the techniques and styles of Romantic art tradition. Romanticism, 1800s, 1810, was a movement in which the artists of new classical period sought to break new ground in the expressions of emotion. Both subtle and stormy, it embraced a number of distinctive themes, such as a longest for history, supernatural elements, social injustice, and nature. Landscape painting also became more popular due to the people's romantic adorations of nature. Romanticism was a rea reaction to the classical, contemplative nature of new classical piece. Characteristics show the height of action, emotional extremes, celebrated nature as out of control, dramatic compositions, heightened sensation, life and death movement. Next is romantic painting. Portraits figure. So the paintings of the romantic period give more emphasis on emotion. Artists express as much feelings and passion as it could be on a canvas. Painters of the Romantic period Jean-Louis Theodore Gericault Gericault was the first French master and the leader of the French realistic school. His masterpieces were energetic, powerful, brilliantly colored, and tightly composed. So his famous artworks, The Rough of the Meadow, the Charging Chasor. Next is Eugene de la Croix, was considered the greatest French Romantic painter of all. He achieved brilliant visual effects using small adjacent strokes of contrasting color. He was the most influential to most of Romantic painters and eventually his technique was adapted and extended by the Impressionist artist and his famous artwork, Liberty Leading the People. Next is this painting commemorates the July Revolutions of 1830, which stopped King Charles X at France. A woman holding the flag of the French Revolution person, uh, personifies liberty and leads the people forward over the bodies of the fallen. Next is Francisco Goya, 1746-1828. Spain. Francisco Goya was a commissioned romantic painter by the King of Spain. He was also a printmaker, regarded both as the last of the old masters and the first of the moderns. So his artworks, the third of May and the Saturn divorging his son, the Boreal of Sardin. Romantic painting, landscape painting. Landscape painting depicts the physical world that surrounds us and includes features such as mountains, valleys, vegetations, and body of water. The sky is another important element shaping the mood of landscape paintings. Landscape arts range from highly detailed and realistic to impressionistic, impressionistic I mean, romantic and idealized. Famous landscape artist during the Romantic period, Theodore Rossi or Jean Baptiste Camille or Camille Corot, they were members of the Barbizon School, a circle of artists who held meetings in the village of Barbizon that led the Romantic landscape painting in France. Next is the Romantic sculpture can be divided into works that concerns about the human world and those that concern the natural world. The leading sculptures of each type were Rude and Barrier, respectively. Pr 
Franco's Road, 1784, 1855 branch. Franco's Road was best known for his social art, which aimed to inspire the capture, the interest of a broad public. He rejected the classical response of the late 18th and 19th century. French sculpture in favors of the dynamic, emotional style and created many monuments that stare the public for generations. And this is his artwork. Next is Anton Louis Barrier, 1796-1875 branch. He was the most famous animal sculptor of all time. He studied the anatomy of his subject by sketching residents of the Paris Zoo. And this is his artwork. Gothic Revival Architecture or Neo-Gothic Gothic Revival also refers to as, to as Victorian Gothic or Neo-Gothic is an architectural movement that began in the late 1740s in England. Many of Neo-Gothic New Gothic buildings feature castellation in which the walls and towers are crenellated and imit imitations of medieval castles. And the heavily castellated New Gothic buildings have been often referred to as a castles, even though they never serve as a defensive structure. Among them was a Strawberry Hill, or demolish and dis restore the most famous work of the decorative phase of the Gothic Revival. Gothic Revival became widely used for churches and civic buildings throughout the West, especially in Britain and the United States. Bricks and stones were both commonly used. So this is the example of this artwork, Strawberry Hill, London. And also, this is their artwork. New Classicism and Romanticism in the Philippines Here in the Philippines, the theology of New Classicism and Romanticism can be seen through various major artworks such as paintings, sculptures, and architectural structures. Some of the well-known contributing artists express their skills and ideas in their own respective fields of specialization. Felix Resurrections Hidalgo y Padilla, 1855-1913 Felix Hidalgo was one of the great Filipino painters of the late 19th century who was significant in the Philippine history for inspiring members of the Philippine reform movement. So this is the example of her artwork, of his artwork, the Christian virgin being exposed to the populace. The painting portrays two scantily clothed Christian female slaves being mocked by a group of Boorish Roman male and looker, lookers. Juan Luna was a painter and sculptor who became one of the first recognized Philippine artists. He was also a political activist of the Philippine Revolution during the late 19th century. One of his famous artworks was the Spolarium, or Spolarium is a Latin word referring to the basement of the Roman Colosseum, wherein the fallen and dying gladiators were dumped and devoid of their worldly position. The painting features a glimpse of Roman history centers on the bloody carnage brought by gladiatorial match, matches. Spolarium by Juan Luna, National Museum of the Philippines. The subject of Luna's Spolarium can be interpreted as an allegory of imperial Rome corresponding to imperial Spain. The image of the Romans dragging the dead gladiators symbolized the colonial oppressions of the indigenous populations. Next is Fernando Cueto Amorsolo, 1892-1972. Amorsolo was a national artist in painting. He was a port portraitist and painter of rural Philippine landscapes, and he was popular, 
Lee known for his craftsmanship and mastery of the use of light. Famous artwork is the planting rice with Mayon Volcano. Next is Guillermo Estrella Tolentino. Tolentino is a Filipino sculptor who was named National Artist for the Visual Arts in 1973 and is hailed as the father of the Philippine arts. The original oblations of the third floor of the main library of the UP Diliman is the work of Guillermo. Next is Napoleon Isabelo Biluso Ab Abueba. Abueba is a national artist for sculpture. He was entitled as the father of modern Philippine sculpture. He has been the only Buholano to, given, to be given the distinctions of national artists of the Philippines in the field of visual arts. Any clarification, suggestions about our topic this morning? So if none, thank you so much for listening. And don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel at www.gaitf.com and don't forget to open our LCMS. Thank you and bye-bye.